interest rates play a really large role in your monthly payment as well as the total cost of getting a home loan. So we're gonna talk about five things today that you really need to know in order to make the best uh, judgment call on whether or not you should either get a home loan or how much um, you're going to be able to afford when it comes to buying a house. Because it's more than just, just, uh, just the cost of the house, it is definitely going to be the interest rate that you are getting that's going to help you qualify for the house. The lower the interest rate, the more house you are going to likely be able to qualify for. So let's talk about those things. The first thing is going to be your credit score. If you have a higher credit score, it typically translates to a lower interest, interest rate. If you have a lower credit score, it typically translates into a higher interest rate. Um, so what can you do now? Well, if you're looking at buying in the next six months, maybe a year, you need to start working on your credit right now. Um, that might be going and having a free credit report pulled. That might mean going to a local lender and just filling out an application, having that hard mortgage pull on your credit, um, just to see what things do you need to be aware of. Uh, maybe some outstanding bills that you didn't know about. Maybe there's an error on the credit report that you need to get taken care of. Um, start looking at those things sooner rather than later because if you wait until you are buying the house, there's really not a whole lot you can do to increase your credit score and potentially lower your interest rate. So that's a huge thing just right off the bat when you are planning on getting a mortgage. Um, the second thing that you wanna look at is uh, take a bit of time to go shopping for a mortgage. When you have your credit pulled for a mortgage, um, the law stipulates that you can um, spend some time mortgage shopping. You have up to 30 days to have your credit pulled at as many mortgage companies as you want and it only counts as one hit. You're gonna have a bunch of inquiries, but it only counts as one hit on your credit. And before, I mean, when I have people who have applied and they're like, oh, I don't want you to pull my credit um, because I don't want my credit score to go down, the most I've ever seen it go down is like five to eight points. And most of the time that bounces back super quickly um, compared to racking up a large amount of debt or taking on new debt. So you, it's not as big of a deal as far as getting your credit pulled and having it ding your credit, unless you've like applied for a credit card, you applied for a home loan, you applied for a car loan, personal loan. If you did a bunch of credit things all at once, that's when you're gonna see more of an impact on your credit score. Um, but again, inquiries typically bounce back fairly, fairly quickly. So it's not something to necessarily be alarmed of if you are just in the planning process. But you need to make sure that you are looking at that prior to getting a home loan. Um, another thing is that if you go to like Credit Karma, for example, and have your credit pulled or you get your free credit report, the score is oftentimes going to be different than if you were to just apply, um, if you were to get a mortgage pull. So if you have like a 780 credit score with the Credit Karma and then you go to a mortgage company or a lender or a broker and you have your credit pulled and let's say it's like 720, don't be super alarmed usually maybe not that far off, but um, you do need to be aware that the mortgage credit pull is a little bit different than when you go get your free score. Um, the important thing is that you go shopping. Um, and I totally, yeah, go shopping, go mortgage shopping. Uh, when you do that, you can look at the loan estimates, basically a worksheet that has all of the fees calculated that's going to give you your total cost of the loan. Uh, go and look at those and compare the different ones. Go talk to a mortgage broker, for example, who's going to get those from multiple different lenders and figure out which one's going to be the best deal for you. Uh, next thing is your down payment. And again, this is just not always, but typical. If you have a lower down payment, your rate is going to be a bit higher. If you put down, let's say like 20, 25, 30% down on a loan, you're going to have better chances of getting a lower interest rate. So think about that. Again, plan ahead and start stocking away some money now so you can put as large of down payment as feasibly possible for that mortgage loan. Uh, the next thing that you're probably going to see on those loan estimates as you are shopping is points. You might see them labeled as discount points. Um, you might see them as mortgage points. What it is is prepaid interest and so if you have funds available, you can actually buy down your rate in the form of discount points. It's not a discount per se, it's prepaid interest. So you pay some of the interest ahead of time and you get a lower rate. Um, that's one way that you can, you can intentionally bring down that rate 
um, in a very controlled way. Whereas if you bring up your credit score, it can help. We just don't know how much. Uh, when you're actually getting a home loan, if you've got some extra money, you can buy down that rate or you can have the seller buy down that rate. But that's something that you need to talk to your real estate agent about and negotiate those things with the, with the sellers of the home. Not always the case, but you never know. They might be generous and help you buy down the rate to help you afford the home. Um, last thing is locking in your rate. When is the best time to lock your rate? Do you wait and see if interest rates come down? Well, there's kind of a caveat to waiting. If you don't want to have your interest your uh, interest rate locked, the danger is that over the next few days, your interest rate might go up. It's super important to understand that rates change daily and sometimes multiple times a day. So sometimes people get, well, maybe tomorrow it's gonna to come down. Nobody knows what the future is gonna hold. If a lender tells you that tomorrow rates are gonna go down, they have no idea, right? Something could happen overnight and rates shoot up like crazy and now you are out thousands of dollars and could potentially keep you from qualifying for the home that you really want. So my best guess right now is to say, lock in sooner rather than later. Talk to your lender about whether or not they have an option to bring down your rate if rates come down. Some lenders do that, not all do. It's definitely something to, to talk to them about and see what kind of negotiating power um, you have. Uh, so that's all I got. That's, that's, those are some really quick tips and things that you need to know about the interest rate, something that you need to be paying attention to as soon as you are thinking about buying a house. Not, okay, I'm gonna go buy a house, now let's look at the rate. You need to be aware of things that you can do to help bring down your rate, or at least be aware of what your rate is going to do to your monthly payment. Because it does play a pretty significant role in that payment and how much that loan costs for however long you keep that loan. If you like this content and you want some more, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and you'll be able to uh, get some more information on becoming a homeowner and various other things regarding the mortgage world. Thanks for watching.